Hi everybody and welcome back to our second tutorial on Assignment 2's uh, review worksheet. Um, in part one, we created our forecast and then we calculated the uh, variances in part two um, for each one of the models. We then got a total of our variances, calculated our uh, mean absolute deviation, and we selected for this example the linear model simply because it had the lowest value of the mean absolute deviation. In other words, it was the best fit. So at this point, what we need to do is we need to uh, copy over our chosen forecast model over to our second tab on our production sheet here. All right, now it's important to uh, take note of a couple of things. One, we are forecasting our production for the months of February to July. So we wanna be careful when we're copying the, uh, the forecast over from our forecast worksheet that we're capturing the correct months and the correct forecast. So let's go back over to the forecast tab. And I say that because I've had students accidentally, you know, copy over the, the error amounts instead of grabbing the forecast amounts at the top. Okay, so linear is the model we chose. Here is February in column C. So we're going to click and highlight on uh, C14. We will copy that over to July and right click to copy. Okay, once you see those dots, you're ready to go. Then click on the production tab and then right across row eight here in cell E8 right under February. You want to highlight that cell and then right click and you want to select Paste special. This is very important because we want to just copy the values over and not the actual formulas. So select paste uh, special. And third item down is values. We'll select that and select OK. And then they filled in for us. OK. And if you click on any of these, you'll notice up at the top here, you're just seeing the number and you're not seeing any formulas, which is great because formulas will not typically copy over properly and you get a bunch of errors and hashtags. So this is uh, the way you want to do it. Also, as I mentioned, this will be the one and only time that you're going to need to copy and paste anything. In fact, on the second tab, now that we've um, copied over and pasted our sales forecast, if you click on the remaining tabs, you'll notice that that formula, those sales copied over on every single tab. Okay, so there will not be any duplication of work on this spreadsheet, which kind of goes hand in hand with what we're trying to uh, learn in this course uh, with uh, structured data. Okay, so now we're on our production tab and we want we need to calculate some things. So anywhere you see a gray cell is where you're gonna need to put in a calculation unless you're uh, locked out. So what we need to determine here now is we've got our total sales in here for February, for example, 95,317. And we want to calculate the number of units forecasted to sell. So a, what I've done to keep it simplified, we're selling three different projects or products rather, uh, widget A, widget B, and widget C. I've assigned one selling price for each one of the units just to simplify. So every single one of these um, products sell for $275. So to determine the number of units that we're forecasting to sell, we're simply going to, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, equals, we're gonna take the total sales in E8, and divide it by D9, okay, our selling price. Now, we're gonna wanna make this D9 an absolute sell reference. You can hit your F4 key. If the F4 key doesn't work on your keyboard, you can just put in a dollar sign before and after the D. Okay, so there is our, for February, our total number of units forecasted to sell. So um, again, it's just the total sales divided by the selling price, and that'll get your number. Once you've got that formula in there, you've made an absolute sell reference with respect to the selling price. You can grab the fill handle there, drag your formula across and let it all fill in. And just as an extra check, you can take a look at the uh, July formula to make sure your formula copied across correctly. Look up in your formula bar and you can see uh, the formula is J8, which is our selling uh, sales forecast, which is great, divided by D9, our selling price. Now everything else here filled in for you automatically. So you can see the production plan now for each month. This is the total number of units. So all of these units, which it's A, B, and C all together, you're gonna to produce 342 units in uh, February. 
So our utilization, you can see that formula, I accidentally left it in there for you. Um, so that's just your E11, which is your production plan, divided by E14, which is your actual capacity. So that's how much you're using. So the next thing we need to determine on this uh, worksheet is now that we know the total number of units that we're going to produce in February, we want to figure out how much now of each one of these products are we going to manufacture in that month, knowing that uh, our total variable is 347 units. So what we're going to do here is quite simple. We're just going to take the total number of units that we're going to produce in the month, and we'll just multiply it by the expected sales percentage of each product. So these three uh, items, of course, would add up to 100%. So to put the formula in there, we're simply going to take equals. Now, please, I caution you, not only on the uh, work as, uh, this assignment review, but be very careful when you're working on your assignment here. When you get into spreadsheets like this, you want to make sure that you're capturing the production. In other words, the planned units to produce, not the units to sell. Because this is, you know, uh, our, our production plan now. We're not forecasting sales here. So it's going to equal E11, which is our total plan production of 342 units, divided by D17, which is our 45%. Right? And again, we'll want to make an absolute cell reference. Okay. Oops. What do we do here? Shouldn't be divide, it should be but multiply. My apologies. There we go. 154. So once again, we took the total production plan of the month of 342, and we simply multiplied that by widget A's um, expected sales. In other words, these are the, the of the total units we're producing. We're expecting that we're going to need to produce this much of widget A based on our, our prior sales. Okay, so we'll just grab that now by the fill handle and drag it across like this. And let's just check um, July to make sure that our formula copied across properly. We've got J11, which is our production total production plan of 349 units times D17, 45%. Terrific. Okay, so now we can just do the uh, same thing for the remaining two items. We'll take our production plan excuse me, in uh, row 11, multiply that by our percentage here, which is in D18, and I will make that an absolute cell reference again. Okay, so we're planning on uh, building 75 units of that in February. Drag it across. Check our formula here again. Let's just make sure. Yep, J11 by D18. We're good. And finally, widget C. So E11 divided by D19. Now, you can also, or pardon me, multiplied by. I'm doing this video very late. I have to be careful. <coughs> um, you can also, if you wanted to, if you didn't want to make a cell reference, you can multiply it by 33% and drag it across. It'll still work. Best practice, though, is always to use cell references when you can. Okay, and we'll drag this across. Okay, and let's just check our formula here. Yep, J11, D19, perfect. All right, so on this worksheet, as well as the remaining worksheets, I put in at the bottom of the worksheet sort of a little check and balance for you to make, you know, just so you can see if you did it correctly. So if we take a look here in February, we're planning now on producing 154 units of widget A, 75 units of widget B, and 113 of widget C. The total of those come to 342, okay, production. Now, if I go up to my top and I look at my total production plan for the month, it's also 342. So that is how we tell that we've made sure that we've allocated these things correctly. If you're working on this, on any one of these worksheets, as you work through the production and planning process or on your assignment, at any time, if your number is different, then you know you made an error somewhere in your calculation. Okay, same thing, we look at March, we've got total units allocated, 333, matches our production plan. April, 345 to 345. May is 341 to 341. 
and so on and so on uh july 349 to 349. so this now you know as you go through things especially in a business uh, manufacturing the business where there's a lot of components now that we know exactly how many units we're going to be producing we're going to know exactly now how much material we need to have on like raw materials if we're in the manufacturing uh, business to produce that and from that we would know what our costs are and so on and so forth so the whole purpose of this assignment and this exercise is to walk you through the process of forecasting sales and then taking those sales numbers in and running it through the entire system and the ERP system uh, to find out what you get at the end of it so I'm going to wrap this up now for, uh, for this uh, this uh, edition a tutorial on this uh, project and uh, when we come back on another tutorial we will then be producing what's called an MPS or a master production schedule until then take care and we'll see you soon